Beginning of the tournament, yeah, five teams pretty much the only that can win it. Tonga, England, Samoa, us and Oz. Well, maybe take Samoa off that list after England blew them out 60-6. to six, And that's the bookmakers had Samoa as favourites in that one. Aussie were comfy over Fiji, 42-8. And us Kiwis, patchy and scratchy, clunky, Michael Maguire called it. We spoke with Brad Walter a little earlier this morning, live from uh, Warrington, and put that question to him first. Bit of an iffy performance, Brad. Yeah, no, it definitely was. Like, like Lebanon came out and, and shocked them. You know, got the jump on them and rattled them a bit. I think it was a really good test, really good first hit out. Just speaking of Michael Maguire and um, Joey Manu, they were saying like some of the combinations need some work. You know, they haven't spent a lot of time together, and um, and, and they probably it's made them realise like it's um, they get, need to play with as much the passion that Lebanon had. They can't take these games for granted, and that. Um, you know, there's some some quality sides or some sides that are capable of playing good football. And look, I think Michael Checker came up with a game plan, not necessarily to, to beat the Kiwis, but one to catch them off guard and put them under a bit of pressure, take them by surprise, short kickoffs. The game started with a short kickoff uh, by Lebanon. They won the ball and they scored a try before the Kiwis had even touched it. And, uh, and you know, and they uh, they competed for a long, long time. When uh, New Zealand got ahead, Lebanon kept fighting and they got another try back. So it wasn't until late in the game when Adam Dewey was sent off that, um, you know, that probably, you know, the points started to pile up against uh, against Lebanon. But they were they were brave and it was just a, I think it was a, a really good uh, really good test and a really good hit-out for, for the Kiwis. I think every, all these teams are going to grow as the tournament goes on. Yeah, and, and look, if you're going to have what Madge Maguire describes as a clunky performance, uh, I mean, you know, you might as well have it now, first game up and get it out of the way, hopefully. Yeah, that's right. And you know, probably, you know, the big three, uh, England, Australia and New Zealand, uh, I think New Zealand had the t- toughest opponent of the tournament. I know there's a lot of talk about Samoa, but they didn't aim up. But, um, you know, Lebanon did. They came here with a game plan. Um, they came here to try something different to unnerve New Zealand. And, and it worked for a large, uh, you know, part of the game. You know, I think what happens in these tournaments is that teams like Lebanon and Fiji can really compete with the big teams for a, a long period of time in the game, but over 80 minutes, um, you know, it's towards the back end of the game where I suppose the, the, the top teams um, get get on top and start to pile on the points and that the scorelines sometimes don't reflect how how competitive the matches were. Let's go back to, to, to the opener then, Tor Samo, and I don't know how those that do the odds, the bookmakers called that in favour of them over England. What the heck went wrong there? A 60-point thrashing. You know, look, I don't think they should have been favourites. Um, I think the book, bookies got that wrong. I think people got excited by the quality of the players, that of the individual players that Samoa ha- had. But like six of their players, six of the players that played yesterday had only been in the country for six days. Um, they'd come off a, off a grand final and they'd flown a grand final celebrations. They'd flown across uh, to England with not much preparation. Oh, and it showed, to be honest, didn't it? But you would have expected more from them than what they than what they put up. I mean, it was 18 six at half time. Probably could have been 18 twelve, but I thought that was a scoreline that really flattered um, Samoa. Um, and in the last, they conceded six tries in the last 16 minutes, and that's just really that's really not acceptable, isn't it? You know, they they really really they really fell away, and I thought let themselves down towards the back end of the game. But having said that, there's they're still a good side, and they've still got good players, and if they can regroup and regather themselves, then you know they, they can still do something in this tournament. But um, they are a long way off the pace, and England deserve a lot of credit. Um, I think you know, England played really well. They came out, they played a, um, a simple game, a structured game, um, you know, and and they just applied pressure, field position, and pressure. They scored some really, really good tries. Dominic Young on the wing for England, the Knights, Young Knights uh, winger. He was absolutely outstanding. The real crowd favourite here. There was a terrific atmosphere. And I think one thing that's probably, you know, we may have underestimated as well is when Samoa and Tonga have played, um, you know, recent in recent years, it's been it's always been in New Zealand and they've had they've had all the support. You know, the Sea of Red uh, for, for Tonga and, and Samoa's obviously had huge support. But here, like, everyone's... The crowd, the crowd in Newcastle was... You know, there were 43,000 people there and I would say all but a handful were, were, were cheering for England. They were singing. Um, and and it's just a completely sort of different atmosphere to what Samoa's um, probably, you know, probably had it in the past. 
Yeah, so, you know, it's just way too much hype. Are we going to expect the same for Tonga as well? Or do you think that they, I mean, they, they, they have been playing traditionally pretty well for about two years. So same kind of upsets for them, or do you think that they're going to be a bit more consistent? No, I think I expect Tonga will be more consistent. Look, they've been had largely the same group of players or the nucleus of their team's been together for five years now. I think, you know, they know how to get the job done. They've beaten New Zealand. They've beaten Australia. They've beaten Great Britain. I don't see any reason why they would suddenly fall away. Um, they've said that, you know, they, they know what works and, and um, you know, they've had success in the past and they've, they've got a, a good team. And it's really interesting that people talk about, like, Samoa compared to Tonga and say, oh, so Samoa's got great halves and Tonga don't and that that's the difference between the teams. But the, the fact of the matter is that the Tonga have had the same players in those key spine positions um, since the 2017 World Cup, and they've managed to said to knock over all the big teams with those players. So those players can't be too bad, you know. Like they're off, in my mind, they're, they're proven and they know what their role within the team. And you know, maybe I think again, I think that's a difference there. Like Jerome Luai and Brian To'o and Stephen Crichton, they hadn't played for uh, with with the Samoan team. Certainly not um, uh, since you know for a couple of years now, and, and highly regarded as what as what they are established as what they are now. They were, they were mainly young kids when they played in the past. And, you know, now they're expected to come in and take on these playmaking roles and these leadership roles. Um, and, you know, it's something that, you know, that they have to develop as a team. They've got to gel, whereas, you know, Tonga's been doing it, as I said, for five years. Um, um, so, no, look, I expect that Tonga will come out, perform, and, and um, you know, and, and they will win their pool games and they will meet England in a semi-final at, down at... Um, the Emirates Stadium, which is going to be absolutely mouth-watering. Finally, Brad, Brad Walter with us um, and at the Kiwi Games still, and we thank you so much for staying up late for us, mate. Look, uh, Australia against Fiji did it comfortably. What are we what are we seeing, what are we thinking, and what are we expecting from them? They're just going to mosey their way through this tournament to the semifinals, aren't they? They're still the, the, the team to beat, surely. I think they are the team to beat. Um, you know, like I've been over here since um, I came over with the Kangaroos, um, a bit over a week ago, and just seeing them train and seeing them, I suppose, just the way they are around the media and the team hotel and things like that, they are, yeah, they're just really professional. You can just see it. And there's just a way that Mal Meninga and his coaching staff, um, you know, they have standards and expectations and um, just the way that they, they organise training and just the players are the players are really enthusiastic. They've got 13, um, uh, you know, play debutants or rookies who hadn't played for Australia before um, and, and no one in the, t- the Kangaroos team has played test football for three years. Um, so there's a real, I think, a real hunger and a real desire, a real passion to play for Australia, but also like just their training, they're just so sharp and energetic and enthusiastic. It's like, um, it's sort of, I'd forgotten like just how, how good they are when they're together and you're seeing, you know, some of the best players in the world or, or many of the best players in the world playing together. So, yeah, I think um, they are the team to beat, just on what I've seen. But, you know, I haven't been to watch the Kiwis train and, or, or England train, so it's hard to say, hard to know. And, I, look, I was really impressed by England, um, you, you know, yesterday against Samoa. Like, I know we say Samoa didn't really turn up or were, were, were off the pace compared to what we'd expected, but, like, England were clinical and they were structured, they were organised, they played with passion um, and composure. They did everything right. You couldn't fault them. They're, they're really well prepared. That's another thing. They've been having training camps for probably the last two years to pre- prepare for this World Cup. And um, and just the addition of Victor Radley and Don Young and Herbie Farnworth, uh, who wouldn't have been in this, playing for them if this tournament had taken place 12 months ago. That's, I think that's just given another dimension to the England team. So, But, yeah, I still I still think it's going to probably be England, New Zealand, Australia and uh, and Tonga, you know, who are the top four nations. I think they're probably going to be the top four again unless Samoa can really get their act together.